Thank you. Welcome to the Dow Operations Call. Uh, today is Tuesday, May 3rd. Is that right? It's, I love how Chalk is trying to do the but, but his hand is like, yeah. He's like, oh. Sorry, pal, I had to call you out on that. Um, but welcome, welcome, everyone. I really appreciate you guys all coming. Appreciate you all being on here. Um, always good to see you guys. Dylan, how are you doing today, man? You having a good day? What's up? Yeah, I'm good. I, I just had an interview and I'm just going through a lot of changes, you know, full time yeah. crypto is the cool good feeling. news. Full time web three. Yeah. What's yeah. the story, bud? Well, you know, I had to leave because it wasn't the right fit. And I have so many people wanting to work with me. And I was tired of like telling everybody I can't do something right now or here or there. So and there's so much to do. And when you just take one opportunity, another one falls in your lap and you just kind of keep going and keep going. So I, I, I had to, you know, make the transition and I'm happy I did. Well, well three. <laughs> there you go. Let's go, Dylan. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so today, um, like I said, we're going to be a little bit, um, what's the word? Uh, just free form a little bit more um, because there are a couple of things that I thought we'd make sure that we open up the floor for conversations about. Um, so here are the three or four topics that I would like to discuss. And of course, I'm happy to have anybody else also throw in if they wanna discuss something. I do wanna keep us very tight at one hour. So at 10, 15 Pacific time, we will shut it off and the conversation will move to the talk one, harmony.one page or Reddit or Twitter or Rachel's inbox uh, because she loves to have people DM her. Um, Kate, how are you doing today? You look like you're smiling. You're good. You're I'm on just mute. laughing at the inbox thing because okay. there's so many telegrams. <laughs> there's so many telegrams. We have way too many telegrams. Um, so the the three or four things that I love to discuss today. Number one, I want to start with um, a little bit of a funding update about the funding pause and a little bit of the rationale behind that. Then I wanna talk a little bit about um, something that we were talking about last Friday on the Q and A's and um, the AMA's and Twitter and, and Telegram and all that stuff. The thing that we're currently calling the One Dow Alliance, um, but I wanna get feedback from you all uh, and let you guys and give a venue for you guys to ask questions about where we are in the thought process here. Um, and this is one of the areas where it's always really hard to be who we are because you're all seeing how the uh, sausage is being made. And that's never a fun process, right? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's sloppy, it's dirty. It's, uh, you know, oh. we go down blind alleys um, and then hopefully we, our friends bring us back. Um, so I want to talk about the One Dow Alliance a little bit. Um, and then I do want to talk just a little bit about uh, tooling um, Rachel and Devin, of course, are, are massive interests in tooling. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. And really, though, this is about it being a QA. and a um, So if, you know, you guys uh, and girls and non-binary, I don't, I'm so old. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody has any of the questions, uh, please feel free uh, to, to, to chime in and, and ask questions. Um, this is an important part of our feedback as we redesign the Dow program um, here at Harmony. Um, so Mikey, let's see. Are you on buddy? Where are you? Yes, I'm here. Oh, there you are. Do you, uh, do you wanna take a, a quick stab about talking about the uh, funding pause and kind of where we're thinking, what we're thinking about? Yes, sure, I'd love to. Yes, uh, funding is still paused from Harmony, just until we get a handle on, sorry about that, uh, just until we get a handle on just how we should do it the best way in cooperation with the community, with the One Dow Alliance. Mm -hmm. um, we hope, I mean, you know, at, at first it wasn't, we, we'd resume May 1st. Um, we don't think that's, we don't think we're ready yet, but you know, Right. As soon as I know more information, the everybody else will know more information. But hopefully, not too much longer. 
Yeah. Like, the idea here, um, and this is this is true, and you guys have seen this. We try we are trying to be very, very good stewards of the assets of our community. And part of that is listening to feedback from the community about what we are funding and what we are providing uh, uh, grants to. Um, the uh, goal here is to make sure that as we deploy these funds, we are asking for the right level of accountability and reporting. And we are asking for um, the right level of justification and the community sentiment and community buy-in. Um, so as a result, Right now, uh, we're pausing any kind of new uh, grant approvals because we want to make sure that, that I don't know if we'll have it right. Like, we don't want to wait until we have it right because, you know, perfection is the enemy of good. But I do want to make sure that we improve the process um, and we, we bring in everybody's feedback. Um, so on that point, Devin, do you want to give us a quick two-liner, three-liner on the one DAO? Alliance, kind of where we sit right now, what is it trying to do? Um, and then I actually would love to open up uh, the, the, the floor for people to give us feedback about whether or not they think it's a good idea, bad idea, um, if you would have any changes to make. So Devin, take it away. Give us you know, a couple of lines about the, the One Dow Alliance. Yeah, I, I'm going to do that. I know Rachel had something to say that she... Um, yeah, very excited I was going to add, uh, just for us to be uh, mindful of the time and the agenda of the call, um, we have Robin from Doodow here. Uh, we set up a live training webinar for last week, and we didn't get a whole lot of participants, so we decided to do like a quick uh, couple-minute demo on this call just to educate people and teach them how to use Doodow. Um, so at some point in the call, um, we'll have Robin come up and give us a demo. Awesome. Oh, yeah. That's, sorry. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me on that. Uh, completely slipped my mind. But yeah, so what we'll do is, uh, Robin, if I give you 20 minutes or so, do you think that's good? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll wrap up the, this conversation at 9.55, and then Robin, you'll have the final 20 minutes of the call to, to give us do DAO once overs. All right, so Devin, dive okay, into our One DAO Alliance. So One DAO Alliance. Is that Tony? I got it, yeah. Tony. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, one DAO Alliance, obviously all about accountability, uh, accountability, accountability amongst DAOs. Um, and we've gotten a lot of good feedback regarding the, you know, one DAO Alliance's dedication to accountability, how it could be more accountable, uh, or make other DAOs more accountable for each other. So if we're, if there's any discussion, I do think it needs to be around the topic of accountability and holding yeah, but I don't have one DAO holding someone accountable. Um, did someone have a comment there? I'm going to go ahead and just mute basically oh, everybody. Oh, okay. People yeah. Um, so that's, that's, uh, the main topic of discussion that I would like to know more about, uh, wh where you guys see different ways to keep other, uh, keep DAOs accountable for themselves, for the treasuries, for their, uh, being stewards of the money, but also the people within their DAOs, right? Um, but where, where it stands right now, the One Dow Alliance framework is out there. It exists online. Uh, I will link it uh, right now, and um, or right after I'm done talking. And uh, as it stands, yeah, if you have any feedback, criticism, anything at all, uh, let us know. And uh, because it was it was essentially written by the people in this room right now, uh, a few weeks ago, and we are uh, iterating upon it until we get to a form that we think is that the community thinks is uh, perfect for what we need, right? And that's the whole point of it. Uh, so with that, it will, uh, we are going to have a One Dow Alliance framework of some kind. If it's called One Dow Alliance, who knows, right? But we need this accountability vector uh, to exist. Um, there are gonna be some other changes, likely. Um, I, I suspect you all know that. Uh, with things that are going on within the DAO operations team and within the DAO operations ecosystem or DAOsphere, right, Sam? So um, uh, expect those things, but the thank you very much, Rachel, for linking that. Uh, the One DAO Alliance framework um, is there. It is a strategic point that, again, you guys identified as something that's a necessity, uh, especially for accountability. So I've talked in circles enough. Uh, does anyone... Uh, 
have a point. Let, to just on. just to uh, just to emphasize this, we listen. Um, the Dow methodology is about organizing our communities, and so if our community is having a hard time with one aspect or another aspect, we want to make sure that we listen to this community and 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 modify our approach accordingly. Um, part the one of the big parts about the One Dow Alliance is this idea about um, the community is going to have a role to play in determining funding. So what will end up happening, and this is of course all in proposal stage. We're still working through all the kinks. There's a lot of stuff still still up for approval and or change. Um, but one of the things that we're going to be doing is every single Dow proposal that comes in the Dow operations team, has, you have to get three approvals from the Dow operations team, first off. But then secondly, it's going to be put up to a community vote, whether or not it's it's approved or not. Um, and so there's going to be a lot. This is going to automatically raise the bar because we're also considering doing a, um, a minimal threshold of you have to have so many votes and then win that vote to be able to, to qualify for an approval. Anyway, so pay attention to that. Um, we can dive into it and, and work on it. But I want to pause right there really quickly. Oh, one other thing I've mentioned, and so start getting your hands up to ask questions. And uh, as you put up your hands, I'll, I will start calling on you. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is I believe that we need to have um, a, a set of DAOs that cover the various different verticals, specifically to organize our communities around those verticals, right? So this is what I'm trying to figure out how best to do it. But the idea is that we'll have, you know, like something, uh, an organization dedicated to uh, NFTs, organization dedicated to gaming, an organization dedicated to, to DeFi, et cetera, et cetera. And the point of these organizations are to advocate on behalf of that vertical to make sure that Harmony has the right partners, has the right tools, has the right infrastructure to serve that particular vertical. Um, and this is, this is very similar to, uh, I mean, well, the idea here, NFTs require something slightly different than DeFi. DeFi requires something different than, than you know, gaming. And so we have to make sure that we do that. Um, we have a question from, from Kate. Kate, do you mind if I call on you directly so we can hear your voice? Yeah, um, so once the DAO Ops team has three votes, then who is voting? People in the DAO Alliance or the larger community? Devin, so, what do you say? What do you think? Yeah, what, um, I believe what we had kind of chatted about as a community was um, that if you, okay, so the One Dow Alliance, in order to be, and, and as it's written, in order to be uh, grantable, right, Dow, you have to be a part or have a representative that is a part of the One Dow Alliance. Yes. So with that in mind, the person that the Dow that we are voting on giving a grant to, hopefully has a representative there. If they do not, then they are not grantable, right. right? So, and who else has the specific knowledge to be able to approve grants like this in the DAO ecosystem? It's the DAOs themselves, right? They understand what's going on. They've probably looked into this DAO. You know, are, are there similar people on that DAO that are in other DAOs that they can speak to this DAO, right? So all the knowledge is based in the DAO sphere. So why not have them be the voters right for for these grants so it's not a community a larger community vote but it is a uh, DAO ecosystem vote where each DAO is given a vote now um two things on this one though okay that's uh, because it's an excellent question um <clears throat> the first thing i would also add is the one DAO alliance is not a DAO, right um it is a a loose organization where we're able to have communications back and forth and, and manage these proposals and get this feedback and, and, and get the experts to help um, relate into it. The other thing, and this is, this is again, when we're looking at making the sausage, this is what Devin and I and Rachel and, and Chalk and you know, we all do all the time is you know, Devin will say something, I will say something and we'll have, well, what if we tried it this way? Or what if we tried it that way? One possible question is for the approval, you have to get it out of the Dow Alliance, but we can always, how would you guys feel about the idea of doing 
a rejection vote, that if it reaches a certain threshold for the community at large, right? So the community at large, we have 500 votes, whatever the threshold is. Our average, our good quality DAOs that are on Harmony, um, we're averaging about 300 votes or 300 participants per vote. Um, so let's say it's you know at least 300 voters and that you have to have a 66% rejection for the community, quote unquote, to reject it. Uh, it's a higher bar for a rejection, obviously, but maybe that's a way in which we can follow the community sentiment um, as well as being involved in, you know, letting them involved in the, the approval. What do you guys think? This is just like literally I hadn't thought about this before. I was just listening to Dev and I was like, okay, this is good. Is there a way to make it better? I have a question. What uh, what what gives you that range exactly? Why why specifically sixty six? Um, if you want to just kind of explain the reasoning, super majority. Mm -hmm. Like you have to get over uh, you know two thirds of the voters have to say no, um, so that's what makes it harder. Oh, uh, question. We have a question from Jacob guys thank you so much um so a couple of questions or i guess statements more so um are there any ideas around how this is going to be communicated to all the DAOs or the community at large and if you could talk a little bit about how you would see like the path forward for somebody getting involved in the harmony ecosystem that might not have friends at the DAO alliance yet um what does that look like for you that's yeah. an excellent question. Both of those are great. So the <clears throat> first thing I'd say is when we have this ready and when we have this approved, we're going to splash it as many different places as we possibly can. It's going to be on Reddit. It's going to be on the talk forum. It's going to be um, on, on Mirror. It's going to be on Twitter. It's going to be, as, we're going to do a YouTube video about it. All of these things will come together. Um, the idea here is, is that we will very clearly approve it and prove the mechanisms. The goal is to have this ready by July 1st, right? Which is why we're having all these conversations because there's a lot to do before we make it go live. Um, the hope is that during this process, we will also finalize our Dow landing page. We will also have some revisions done um, for uh, Notion and the website. Um, so that it makes it easier for people to find this information um so there's there's a lot of things that go into that uh but that's part of the goal for somebody new as they come in they may not have a friend in that in the dao alliance which actually is one of the things that's super important about every single new daoist i think is that as you join a dao as you come into this space you find a, a job you find a responsibility you can have you find a friend and you start participating on a regular basis, right? So you're able to like, you know, private chat people about, hey, what's going on with the, you know, uh, the community DAO, the validator DAO, the developer DAO, and you'll have somebody who can give you the, the latest. Um, the way that I see it is the DAO Alliance is kind of the United Nation where every DAO sends an ambassador or a representative to the DAO Alliance to provide the reporting, to provide the feedback, to provide the expertise from that specific DAO. The individuals join those smaller DAOs that send representatives to the alliance, right? So, for example, Jacob, you would say, let's let's say you join um, the music DAO, right? Because you're a musician, and so you join there. You're you're voting, you're sharing the responsibility, you're sharing the workload, um, and then and that's the DAO that you're actually working in. At some point, that DAO decides, Jacob, okay, we want you to represent us at the alliance for you know, whatever the term is. You, you, and each DAO can kind of decide this, but it's you know one month or three months or whatever. And so you would attend the, those meetings for that purpose. That's kind of the idea. Again, the Alliance is not supposed to be a, um, it really is a clearinghouse of information and a place that we can put a little bit more emphasis on reporting and accountability for the DAOs. Did awesome, I grab man. that right, Devin? Um, what, what I would say is, 
just being able to communicate that to new people entering the ecosystem, I think is gonna be super, super important. Um, I, I'm, I like the idea of a 60% no vote or 66% no vote. I think um, that adds like an additional layer of protection on there. But I think with those extra barriers of entry, it's really important to create a, a well laid out path for people to get involved because you wanna create an inclusive ecosystem and you want great ideas to be able to surface and new people to come on. Yeah, agreed. Um, Dylan, I'll get to your question in just a second. Um, Kyle raised his hand. Hey, Sam, thanks. Uh, thanks hey, for the dialogue, Steve, and everything, too. Um, my question was more relating, I, I was just trying to understand the uh, structure of the DAO Alliance, uh, particularly the staking part. Uh, first off, I think it's a great idea to have DAOs uh, stake a minimum amount of their, uh, their treasury. Um, I've been wanting that for the community DAO for quite a while now. Um, it said that the rewards earned from staking will go towards funding the DAO Alliance. Now, is that the rewards from the uh, amount matched by Harmony, or will the rewards from the DAO be expected to be contributed to the DAO Alliance as well, as opposed to going uh, towards their own treasury? That wouldn't make sense. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Kyle, for asking that. Because at the end of the day, like everything here is up for discussion about, okay, how would this work? How would this work? One of the ideas, and we're not sure whether or not this is going to gather approval or even um, the, the, the community sentiment would be behind us, is that as we approve, let's say we approve um, the validator DAO for a $100,000 grant. Every grant, all of our grants are always based on milestone payments. So we set aside $100,000 and that $100,000 goes into the DAO Alliance treasury and the one DAO Alliance treasury stakes that. And the proceeds from that, the staking rewards from the $100,000 of the full grant come back to help fund Alliance initiatives. As the validator DAO completes the various different milestones, let's say there are four milestones, 25,000 each, the one DAO Alliance approves the $25,000 transfer because they validated and they verified that a milestone has been reached. And then they move that 25, they unstake $25,000 and move that $25,000 to the validator DAO. So this is kind of um, a two-step process. Well, the community will be able to see number one, every grant that we've approved that the, those assets are being moved over and, and, and set aside for them. Number two, by staking those early on, the Alliance gets a little bit of operational income. Number three, um, the Alliance will have some uh, responsibility to ensure that milestones are being met before the payouts happen. So this isn't like the Harmony core team has to go and double check if the validator DAO um, went from you know, let's say it's 150 elected validators to 200 validators, which would have been a deliverable as part of their grant, you know? So that's kind of the idea right there, Kyle. Like I said, still early days. I don't want to make things over complicated because that's how we introduce places of failure. Um, but that's kind of what we're thinking right now. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's see. So Dylan had a question. DAOs are responsible for voting in governors and then governors vote in an administrator for the one DAO Alliance. So Dylan, I, I think you and I some, I don't, I don't like the term governor. Um, I think that governors imply that there's, there's a lot of baggage that comes with the term governor. Um, expectations that this individual is responsible for the entire DAO. Um, expectations that they are the only ones who are going to get paid out of a small treasury. They get paid first and the community members get paid second. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff on, th there's an expectation that they're the leaders or leadership of the DAO. And that creates a lot of um, issues. That being said, part of the thing that we've been discussing is whether or not we're at a stage where we can call our organizations truly decentralized autonomous organizations 
I don't know how many smart contracts we have in the mix for any of these DAOs. I don't know how much of the automation we actually have there. And so governors end up taking a whole lot of, of, of what's going on. Um, and that's, that's hard. Um, so I've been, I've been referring to them as DAO signatories because that's really their role is to sign the multi-sig. Um, but it, it, this is gonna be a process of, of cultural change identification and and just you know having these having these uh conversations um the uh the follow-up on that is in my view the community votes for the signatories and the community votes for the representative to the alliance but i think i think maybe the DAOs themselves should be able to decide that um, so I, I, I'll leave it up to them a little bit. Um, the second question Dylan had really quick, and then I'll, I'll pop over to you, Robin. Um, foundation assets versus DAO assets. The management of the funding DAOs come from the Alliance and the DAOs find ways to deliver using the funding. Dylan, do you want to take yourself on mute and kind of de describe that a little bit? Sure, yeah. Um, sorry, I was trying to form the question as, as uh, you were talking. So it's um the alliance then looks at the deliverables and the DAOs, the separate cores they uh come to the DAO alliance for certain funding activities they have the needs and desires to push some sort of deliverable uh but the assets have to come from the alliance this is from what i understand from what you're saying this is, i don't know if this is a question i'm just trying to understand how you were framing it because um, this means that the alliance is the way that then the cores would then find ways to get funding rather than it going to the foundation. It goes to all of the DAOs to then manage the assets and the grants coming from the alliance. So the alliance is going to be a giant piggy bank. And then we're all going to well, try to, yeah. Yeah, it's an excellent question. It's an excellent question. Let me work our way through this. First step is, we need one of the most important things we have to do is create a primacy of the concept of self-funding for all of these DAOs. Like we need to change the entire narrative. We need to change the entire culture of DAOs on Harmony that says their goal is to become self-sufficient, self-funded first, right? That's one of the initial things. Um, like that is 100% important. The next step is the Harmony DAO Ops team and the core team are going to be continuing to review grant applications. As we approve them, they'll go up to the alliance, to the members of the alliance, to get a, a straight up or down, you know, 51% approval for that fund, right? And let's say it's $100,000. Then when that happens, when you have three yeses from the DevOps team and you have the approval from the alliance, that money gets transferred from the the Harmony Foundation into the Alliance, specifically earmarked for that specific grant. Then what happens is as the grantee completes their milestones, they submit their milestones to the Alliance for approval. The Alliance and the representatives review it and say, yes, you hit your metric, or no, you just hired, for example, people are complaining a lot about the idea of having a number of Twitter followers as a metric. It's about growing community. We understand it's a vanity metric. We understand that it can be gamed really well. So let's make it harder to game, which is something like, hey, the Alliance will vet your Twitter followers and be like, oh no, all you have is bots. No, we're not, we're not, that's not you know fulfilling it. So when the milestone is met, the the DAO comes to the alliance and says, okay, I met this one that qualifies for 25k. The alliance reviews it, they approve it, and then they pass it, pass it out. But at the end of the day, two things super important. Number one, DAOs are focused on self-funding. DAOs are focused on self-sustainability. Number two, no additional the alliance, the only assets that the alliance has. It's from proposals that have already been attributed or earmarked for a project. 
which means that there will probably, Devin, we will probably want to take a note here. There'll probably need to be a mechanism for returning uh, grants to the Harmony Foundation if they're not, you know, if they, if like they, there's some sort of death of the Dow, right? Like the, the idea is, is they completed one milestone, but then they stopped working. So they still have, you know, like three milestones left to go. Those assets should be transferred back to the Harmony Foundation. Um, That's the zombie Dow clause. Zombie yeah, Dow clause. the zombie Dow clause, exactly. So, all right, we have about uh, five more minutes. Robin, I saw your hand up. Um, did we resolve your question? Uh, my question is around like, how do we make sure the people who are applying for the grants and all, they get like, uh, uh actionable advice and feedback because i think like maybe they don't get grant but they get like the right advice and right actionable feedback which is like very important for everyone so what is the framework around like providing that and how do we make sure that's very very relevant for them that's a good question um i think that's actually a little bit of a tbd am i right Devin? like we have of course public forums and we have places that people can discuss we are trying to get, um, you know, Robin, this is true to, dear to your heart. We're trying to get all the right sort of tools to be able to share these expertise and this information. Um, but I think as far as an official hard-coded feedback framework, I don't know if we have that yet. Um, Dev, am I missing something in the write-up? That would be correct. That's yeah. still in flux. Yeah. So that's a good, that's a good, and this is the reason why we, we bring this up to the community. Sometimes there are really important ideas um, that we may have missed. So this is good. All right, uh, really quick, let's see. Um, quick difference, what's the difference between the DAO and the community? The, uh, so this is Rob's question. Um, the DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization is like the corporation and the community are the employees. That's not a great way of describing it, well, but that's the difference. I think, ahead, that's I think that's an important distinction. Well, there's two ways that this could have been read. What's the difference between the OneDAO Alliance and the community? Uh, the OneDAO Alliance is um, a member of each DAO is present and is a representative there. Other people can join the meeting, right? And, and listen in and stuff, but they don't have any say on things that that representative would or responsibilities that that representative would, which is like reporting, right? I don't have to, I can just show up and report. Um, on, but the DAO and community is actually brings up an interesting point of, uh, we, we don't have to get to it this call because that yeah. would go on for a while. Yeah. Yeah. We could, we can start digging into, uh, political theory. The other way to look at it is, is, uh, the community are the citizens and the DAO is the country, right? Um, let's jump. I'm, I'm going to take a look really quickly to see if there's else. Um, um, core yeah, team will approve grants. What was that? Tim's got something. Oh, Tim, I didn't see your hand. Go ahead, Tim. Just super fast. Um, I just rolling it back to about the Dow approval and if it's going to be like alliance or is it going to be community members being able to vote themselves? Um, I just want to highly suggest that we try to figure out some way, shape, or form where the community has direct buy in on grant approval. And I know that's a completely different discussion, but I think it's absolutely needed with the recent feedback and sentiment that we read. Yeah, and that and Tim, this that's uh, obviously part of what this is. We're trying to make sure we do because there's there's two sides to this, right? We have seen on one hand, we can't approve everything. We can't give grants to everything. On the other hand, we can't let ourselves be swayed by somebody saying, hey, you know, uh, you funded this project. My project is a carbon copy. Why won't you fund me? Or uh, you funded my project, which is great. And now I'm going to leverage my community to stop any other project or DAO that competes with my project or DAO. And so they're just going to go in and, and, and brigade every single other proposal that could possibly compete. So on one hand, yes, Tim, we need the community to be involved in the, the approval, which is why I think the Alliance will have a good role in that, because these are people who know how to DAO that have been DAOing and understand what's happening in the DAO ecosystem on Harmony. 
the flip side was this idea of a rejection, which is that every proposal that goes up, you will have the community has a vote where you have to have a high threshold of voters. So let's say 300 voters, and then you have a, a high threshold of a rejection vote, which is 66%, still TBD. We have two minutes left before I wanna throw it over to, to Robin for the doodow. And I'm actually gonna pick on, on Jack and, um, because he is one of the smartest people I know and I don't wanna miss his words of wisdom. Also, one thing, Sam, um, I'd like to give an update on Dow Tools too uh, for a moment before we pass it over to Robin. Okay, go ahead, Jack. Um, I just want to chime in on that, Sam. Um, well said, um, Tim, well, great point. I think what we can do, just a suggestion, um, if there are grants that are approved, um, whether they are DAOs or any other um, form of um, grant, maybe we can introduce sort of a quadratic voting at the time of say a milestone is completed and having the community check out this this is like a win-win where if the community let's say there are some parts of the community are happy to have a certain grant come in um, and there are some members of the community that are doubtful they have the voice during the release of the funds to actually vote during that time and do the QA and say, hey, um, we promised certain thing. I thought it's gonna be a, a Ferrari, but I'm getting a bicycle. So I'm not gonna say yes to this and I vote down on releasing the funds um, during that time. That, so this could be like a, a in-between that we can introduce once we have some sort of orchestra orchestration tool, which we are trying to build in um, so far. So just an idea, maybe we can, uh, discuss that in the future. I, I like that idea. I like the idea of a quadratic funding or quadratic voting. Um, I think, uh, like we've said, uh, and Jack, you missed this part, uh, we're inviting the community in to see how the sausage is being made as we kick around the Dow Alliance proposal and try and answer the questions and, and the things that we need to do and have it be. Um, so thank you. I think that's actually really good feedback. Um, George, can your question take exactly one minute? Um, no. <laughs> is it, do you, um, let's see, why don't you say it really quick and then we'll see, we'll, we, we may have to cut some time from Rachel and, and Dow Tooling. So we have time for the do Dow. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, speaking on behalf of the Harmony Dev Dow, um, there are a couple questions, uh, from the Dev Dow regarding the Dow token and the reputational aspects of the token. Um, if I could ask that. Um, if it um, if it could be transferable to beyond just being deployed in Aragon, um, from what he understands, and for the from what uh, certain governors of the DevDAO understand, um, you can't really transfer it out and it's stuck in the wallet. And also, if we could um, coordinate with the Harmony team to give more shout outs to the DevDAO, since uh, we do a lot more than just get a uh, than just doing uh, customer support and IT support for people who come into our Discord, we're trying to support. Devs. We're trying to do town halls as well. We're trying to uh, create a, a dev town hall uh, each month. So we're trying to get devs from different projects across Harmony to come and uh, build uh, our community of devs as well. So those are two different questions, actually. That'd be great. Hey, George, why don't, hey, Tim, would you mind setting up a, a call, a meeting? Um, as Tim is kind of uh, leading up our, our dev relations um, uh, projects uh, or DAO relations projects. Tim, will you set up a meeting with George and, and some members of the uh, the Dev DAO so we can address their their questions? Yeah, I, I've been talking to George a little bit. Uh, okay. And right before this, I was at a, I told him I was at the doctor's office and wasn't sure I could talk on here, but uh, I'll get with him and Ed and Isaac and we'll get with, we'll get it done. Perfect, perfect. All right, all right, Rach, uh, it's over to you now. Um, but I would like you to take like I don't know five minutes for your update. It won't even take that long. Uh, so real quick, you guys, uh, I just want to talk about Dow tooling and give you all an update. Um, so with our Dow tooling, I'd like to talk about impact, education, and functionality of our already existing tools. Um, so you'll notice on the May deliverables, we're not chasing after a high number of tools, but rather getting impactful tools that will offer the greatest functionality to Dow's. Um, so for March and April, looking back, Devin and I got seven Dow tools per month. Um, and looking back at, in hindsight, um, we have to ask ourselves, we, we got a high number of tools, 
but how many of these are actually being used? How many are actually having an impact? And are DAOs educated on how to use these tools? Um, so what I've included in my made deliverables <clears throat> um, is to get each DAO educated by um, publishing 14 training webinars, because we have 14 tools so far. Um, so I wanna make sure that each DAO knows how to use this tool. They're actually having an impact um, and you know, we're not just chasing vanity metrics. Um, so I'm gonna share really quick. I've put together um, this page that has one pagers for each DAO tool. Um, if you're on a DAO and you wanna take a look at this and you're experiencing any pain points whatsoever and one of these tools resonates with you, um, I'd be happy to act as a bridge of communication uh, between the DAO tooling team and your DAO uh, to set something up. Um, so that being said, uh, for the month of May, uh, Devin and I are looking at a couple really impactful tools. Uh, we're looking at Opolis to get workers in Harmony benefits and be compliant with taxes um, and just make things easier when it, when it comes to the financial side of things um, on you know, being a Web3 worker, um, having proof of employment. Um, looking also at Mirror for Web3 article publication, ownership, and another path uh, to self-sustainability for DAOs. Um, and I'm interested in DAO reporting tools with an emphasis in accounting and data collection um, because moving forward, we do want to make sure that DAOs um, are self-sustainable. Uh, so having the accounting in place is essential to be able to look back and um, measure the success of the DAO every month. Um, and lastly, I'm interested to learn about any DeFi tools uh, to offer another path to self-sustainability for DAOs. Uh, so if anyone has any recommendations on good DeFi protocol tools, I think that would be a valuable addition to our ecosystem uh, to help DAOs achieve self-sustainability. Um, so that's it. So really for May, um, guys, just, just stay tuned. We'll be posting uh, training webinars for each of the DAO tools we've onboarded. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Robin, who's going to give us a demo on DoDAO. Uh, that's one of our DAO tools from last month. And this also goes into education and perhaps there's some potential for collaboration there, maybe to educate our community on DAO tools, because I know DoDAO makes uh, guidebooks for DAOs. Uh, maybe we can incorporate that in with tooling. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Robin. Thank you, thanks, guys. Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. First of all, thanks to some of the folks who I've been coordinating with, like Shark and uh, Mikey and Rachel. They've been very supportive. Right, uh, it's really important. Like uh, people who are there in the community, they respond to all new members and all. Uh, people feel very connected, and I got like really good feedback from other folks like uh, uh, Sway, Devin, and uh, uh, Jonathan was there, and Ben, and uh, Blooms, like a couple of other folks who have, who have talked to me regarding Doodow and other other stuff that they've been doing. Right, so really good to get that feedback. So I need to get access to share my screen. All right, try again. Awesome. Okay. So first of all, I'll give some overview. Like I've been always into like cooperatives and uh, about like that type of philosophy, like the common ownership and all of the community. So I'll just share some numbers. When we talk about DAOs, these are the numbers that we're targeting, right? They In the US, I think there are 29,000 cooperatives, right? 1 billion people are members of the cooperative worldwide and all, right? These are just like some of the US numbers. And uh, these are some of the numbers of cooperatives that are like around the world, right? In Canada, like where I live right now, like uh, four of every 10 Canadians are members of at least one cooperative. So we can just imagine the impact that we can do by bringing in the technology, the stuff that we're doing, right, to all of this. So if you have to create a cooperative yourself, right, it takes at least $20,000 as a legal fee, and then you have to pay a lot of other stuff. But if you have to create a DAO on blockchain, it takes like maybe 10 to $20 on layer two as the gas fee and all. Right. So that is the sort of impact we can have if we try to develop like nice processes, nice tooling and all, and try to promote all of the stuff that has already been done. Right. So it's just putting our technology on a lot of these DAOs that are already there. 
So about Dudao, like I was always interested in knowing about cooperatives and all. It started as purely educational platform where I was writing about DAOs uh, or about DAO frameworks and all. Uh, and I myself, I'm a software developer. And then I found like onboarding is missing. People find it very tough to know about what the projects are doing, right? And uh, and get that information in the right way. So we created like an onboarding platform, which I'll show. So. Basically, what we try to do is we provide the information in the form of onboarding guides, which contain content, videos, or we ask the questions also. We ask for users' information as well. So I'll launch the app now. So these are all the Ethereum-based DAOs that we have. And then uh, and then I'll show like the Harmony DAOs, which we created. So these are the Harmony DAOs, right, which we covered so far. Plan is to cover each and every. And uh, this is the latest guide that we created for basic DAO, which I'll walk through. And all of this stuff could also be white labeled. So like SW DAO is another project that we're working with. So all of their guides, their theme and all. People who go to their website, they don't need to know about DAO, right? Because we want to make it like the end thing as easy as possible, right? So the end user, they just remain in the same look and feel in the same project. They're not jumping from one place to other. So when we talk about uh, the guides, basically we need to connect to the wallet first because the guide completions, they are tracked uh, through the wallet address. So if you need to submit a guide, you need to connect your wallet address. And these guides are very easy to configure. So we can also integrate like Discord webhooks. So as the people are going through these guides, we get updates in Discord that who went through the guide, what's the score they got. And what is the information they filled in and all? So I go back. So let's go through this uh, basic DAO guide. We share like, okay, what is the basic DAO? We have a video and all that information. Again, we wanted to keep the UI as simple as possible, so that it's like not another learning curve for in the for the end users. So they answer the questions. So they have to go through these questions. This is not to test the user, but just to make sure that the user is going through the most important information that is there in the video or the content and all. So we share like what are the deliverables for basic DAO, who are the signatories and all. So what is the primary duty of signatories? Some information there to it. So sub teams and deliverables and that again, like we could have videos or other type of content as well embedded into the guides. So here we can ask for user information so I'll just say Robin and uh, like, so this is the required field. And when I complete the guide, I see that how much correct answers I got of total. This is just to give feedback to the user. And we can see all of these submissions here uh, that who submitted the guide, when did they submit and what is what are the scores they got. So I think, yeah, we also send these submissions onto Discord. Let me see. So many Discord channels. Yeah. Okay. So if you see here, like uh, the guide about basic DAO submitted by this wallet address with the result of this. And this was uh, the field that I filled in, which is the nickname Robin. So these are the high level features, but like we have other features like uh, combining guides into guide bundles and all, because uh, you would want to lay out a path for the growth and all. And these do not need to be just like onboarding guides. This could be how to guides or level up guides and all also. Uh, and uh, we have other features that are coming up. If I go to do it outside. So, some of the things that have been covered is like member, they go through the onboarding platform, which I show, which is separate for Harmony. They get to know about all the Harmony DAOs. We could create a white label site, which I showed here, right? A white label site, people can go through and the users would not be distracted and all. They stay in the same look and feel in the same project. They go through these guides and all. After they go through these guides, we want to give them like the Discord roles and also, so that uh, that incentivizes them Right, and also keeps it easy for the core members. So basically we want to create a funnel. There are a lot of lurkers in Web3, like, but then there are people that were really interested. So we want to separate out uh, that crowd, like maybe out of 100, maybe 30% 30 30 of the people really want to participate. So the guides would separate out those. 
right? After we get uh, the relevant people, they could be given access to the Discord channels and all, and uh, and they can participate with the code members and all. And we would, this is the next feature that we'll be working on, which is trying to award badges or tokens as the users complete these guides or guide bundles just to incentivize folks and all. So I think like later down uh, the road, like maybe in two months or so, we'll try to build like a gamified profile and all for the users. So I think this is on a high level about uh, what the product is, but the vision is like much more because uh, the real vision is that we want to help people work for their passions. For example, my passion is working uh, uh, on projects related to sustainable farming, right? Or it could be philosophy related projects and all. So what DAOs would enable is you to buy tokens in the project, which is partnership in those projects, right? And, and add value and you would be given the chance to add value based on your time, your interest and your availability. So we want to be that tool that provides all that information and helps member find those projects and connect members to those types of projects. So right now the mission is first to cover as many blockchain projects as possible and onboard as many members. But th this is the vision where we want to reach. Like I'll be happy if I'll be able to find like a couple of sustainable farming projects on Dudao and like few few philosophy projects and all, right? Where I know that I could collaborate like for six hours a week or four hours a week. And then at least uh, I'm working with like-minded people and all. Yeah, so any questions and all would be great. And so far, I would also say that uh, the project we started with, it's changing every day based on the feedback we get. And like Shark was uh, giving the feedback to education platform, where it, how it's evolving. And uh, like Ben was giving feedback to how to guide, he said it should not be related to just onboarding. We should have like other types of guides as well. So we developed it. Other feedback also, which we get, we just note down and try to have all of those features. I like it. I like it. Um, I think in general, we all are really excited about this, Robin. So for all of you people who are excited, start clapping. Like, this is awesome. Oh, good. Kate, you can clap. Oh, okay, good. Oh, okay, good. We got them. All right. Um, okay, so looks like we got about five minutes left. Um, I don't know. Uh, why don't we just... Why don't we just have somebody tell a really funny joke? Kate, you're funny. Tell a joke. No? <laughs> I got Evan's COVID. funny. Who got COVID? Who was that? Jacob? Oh, no, George did. George, I'm sorry you got COVID, mate. But it's funny because I get to share of all of you that I have COVID now. And, you know, now everyone knows I have COVID. So now there you I go. Yeah, this is, this is both being recorded and it will be posted later today. Uh, now, did you get COVID at ETH Denver like the rest of us? I wanted to, but I couldn't because I couldn't get to ETH Denver. So it seems like I just got COVID like walk around my house. That's, that, that, that's actually a little scary for your housekeeping. Um, so, <laughs> all right, you guys. Um, I, as always, I appreciate the work that you are all doing. Um, doing a DAO is not an easy thing to do. Um, we are really trying to, to break um, new ground here. One of the things that Robin said that I think is so incredibly important is this realignment with what we're doing for work. Um, James, I'll get you in just one second. In general, the way I was raised and way, the way my parents were raised and generations for years have been all about the fact that your job is your paycheck. That's all you care about. Our generation and the generation underneath me and the generation underneath them have realized that that's not enough. It's not enough to just get a paycheck. It's not enough just to chase the almighty dollar. You have to chase a cause. You have to have a reason to get out of bed. You have to be able to look yourself in the mirror and not hate yourself, or at least feel like you're doing something that enriches your life, enriches others. And that's why I think DAOs can really change the narrative. It's no longer just about being paid it's now about doing something that you're passionate about, something that you love. So that's kind of the goal, but it's really hard to crack that. Uh, James, your hand is raised and I think you're not just trying to give me a high five. 
<laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, um, I, the VDAO did have a few things, ideas that we wanted to run by everybody. And they're just they're just ideas. We wanted to feel it out, see see what everybody thought about them. But we um, also I have an idea for self-sustaining funding. Um, it was basically I, I posted this in the RPC thread that I started on the forums. Um, I, I think it was titled RPC servers. Should we limit our growth or something like that something along those lines they were talking about limiting the rpc servers but anyway um it's an idea to take a small portion of each transaction fee at, or, that happens on harmony period and send it to a multi-sig treasury wallet like a main treasury wallet and that obviously would grow very fast the end user would hardly notice that fraction of harmony going to it and we could require maybe like three signatories from each Coradal to sign off on those transactions. And that would provide funding possibly for the entire ecosystem. That's an interesting idea, James. Um, did anybody else watch the movie Office Space growing up? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's where, where it came from, kinda, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I caught you right there, James. It's like, wait, I've heard this, I've heard this before. Uh, or, you know, to, in a less uh, humorous way, every time I go to uh, CVS or Panda, they're like, do you want to, you know, round up to the nearest dollar to be able to fund whatever? Um, it's an interesting idea. I think we should kick it around a little bit. Um, there's something to be said for the fact that um, one of the reasons I don't like taxes is because I sometimes feel like my tax money is going to thing causes that I don't necessarily agree with. So if we are forcing everybody who's using the Harmony chain to contribute to this fund, and then this fund does something with that money that they don't necessarily agree with, are we okay with that? I don't know. Um, I'm That's the place that from an ethical level, from a moral level, I'm a little... Well, I need to be convinced on it. But to that point, James, I, I definitely think that we should think about and talk about ways in which we can continue to help fund and continue to have the community engaged. Um, so I really think that that is excellent. I do, I think there's enough there to have a post on it, like to have its own post on the forum and to tweet it out and get people talking about it. Um, so I say, go for it and let's get the community. This will be the entire community that would have to deal with this to, to both benefit from it and also pay for it. And so I think we should get the entire community um, to, to weigh in on it. So that's what I would say. All right, you well, guys, dude. it is exactly 10.15. Thank you so much for this Tuesday morning. I really appreciate all your guys coming on. Um, Please do not hesitate next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Tuesday morning, 9.15 on this Zoom link. Bring your friends. We currently have 24 participants. I think our high watermark today was about 30, 32. Let's see if we can pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. Right, Devin? Rookie numbers. What's Devin, man, yeah. why, are you, why are you always doing rookie numbers? I, uh, I so <laughs> so uh, invite your friends. Anybody who works... Uh, Dylan is over here saying, hey, we're all going to make it. I agree. Um, I love you all. You guys are all amazing. Thank you so much for your continued support and your continued work. Don't hesitate to reach out to all of us. I make it very clear that everybody on the DevOps team has to be able to engage with the community at all times. Thank you all. I'm going to stop recording and we will see you all next week.